Today, the main point that I want to discuss with you is when to think. When is thinking appropriate when we are practicing these teachings of self-inquiry and disengaging from thought and learning to abide as the awareness? So this is a question that I receive very frequently, right? How much should I disengage from thought? Is it ever appropriate to think? Should I think only to problem solve? So that is the what we're going to discuss today. You have to look at it from two different perspectives. One is the personal perspective, which is like your day-to-day life living as a person. And that's also the perspective from where these concerns are raised. When to think, how much to think, and so on. And the greater perspective, which we can call the self-inquiry perspective or the quote-unquote perspective of awareness. So from the personal perspective, I invite you to think whenever you need to. Think when you feel you have to. If right now you are thinking about planning something in the future, let's say like a trip you're going on, of course you're going to have to think to book a flight for the particular day you're trying to leave and a hotel for when you arrive. You're going to have to think about what you're going to be doing, what activities on what day, and so on. And try to differentiate between the type of thinking that is actually practical versus thinking which is like psychological and fear-based, personal self, ego-based. So there's one, right, this planning that we just talked about, whereas notice the other type of thinking that happens, which is like worrisome. Oh, is my flight going to be on time? Uh, is this is this hotel going to be safe and, and you know all these scenarios and what could happen at the hotel things could go wrong um, uh, things could go on, wrong on my trip should I even go um, is it is it going to be okay am I going to return home safely am I going there in the right uh, right destination should I have picked the so you see there's like this type of mental chatter this type of thinking versus the practical type of thinking which is not conflict ridden. So firstly, there's that. Differentiate between these two types of thinking and disengage entirely from thoughts that are that fear, concern, worry-based, okay? Because they're not going to do you any good. They're entirely safe to disengage from. Now, that leaves the planning type of thinking, right? Or the problem-solving type of thinking. Think as much as you feel you need to. But it's not just that. You think whenever you feel you need to, but this is where your practice of self-inquiry comes in. You have to learn to disown the thinking as your activity. What do I mean by that? Right now, when you say, when should I think? Or should I think when I have to problem solve? Notice that this question itself is arising from the assumption that you are a body, a person, who is thinking as like an activity, the activity that you are doing in order to accomplish something. So even this notion, this idea arises on behalf of the personal identity where you are the owner of thought. You are the doer of thought. This is the wrong perspective. This is where your practice of self-inquiry comes in. You have to learn to see that, okay, on the apparent level, on the level of appearance, on the level of experience, on the level of personhood, of course, I think when I want to, and it appears that I, the person, I, Sunny, am thinking. But you have to start to see that that is only on the apparent level. It is only on the experience level, on in what appears to be. But now you are not just interested in what appears to be. You are interested in what truly is in the truth of things so it's okay that on the apparent level it appears that i am doing the thinking but you have to start to see how you that which is aware are never doing anything you that which is aware of the thinking are not doing the thinking thinking happens 
even in this very moment when you feel like I am thinking, this is an illusion. This is just a false perception of things. In truth, you are only the witness of thinking. You are only the awareness in which thinking spontaneously appears and disappears. You do not choose what you think. You do not control what you think. You don't even know your very next thought. Even when you say, I am going to think vacation, that is just something that appeared also spontaneously. You didn't go through any catalog to choose that thought. You simply spoke the first thing that arose in the mind, right? That, that's not something you are choosing. It is a spontaneous appearance which you are aware of. Not you, the person, you, awareness, are aware of. So at one level, you are thinking when you have to as a person, right? But you now, because you are growing wiser, you understand that that is only on the apparent level. On a more actual level, on a higher level, you are seeing that I am only the witness of whatever appears, including the thinking, including the deciding, which is also thinking, including the actions that result from the deciding, right? The actions of the body. Everything you are aware of, you are only the witness. You have to keep returning to the, this fact. That is the main essence of self-inquiry. No matter what is being experienced circumstantially, no matter what the body is doing, no matter what the mind is thinking or feeling, you have to keep returning to the fact that you are only the witness of what is appearing. This is what is meant by learning to disown what is appearing, disown the thinking, feeling, doing. This is you learning to outgrow the personal identity. Personal identity, ego, it is reinforced by you constantly taking ownership over thinking, you constantly identifying with the thinking. This is you learning to break free from that identification. If you want to go deeper into self-inquiry right now, I'm giving away a free self-inquiry guide. You can access it down below in the description. I'll, also in, I'll link it in the first comment of this video. And also, if you need my help and you want to be supported by a community, learn more about School of Awakening. It is our wonderful community. Uh, it will help you deepen your practice and dissolve mind identification through these very uh, practices and techniques. I'll link that down below as well. Check that out. I hope that this video helped you. Do you have a question of your own that you would like to ask me? Please put it in the comment section below. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.